Okay, FAQ number 18. The question comes up, were the King James Bible translators, uh, were they Bible-believing Christians? Um, and what the whole argument is here, that in a King James Bible, there's this thing that translators to the reader. Okay, I'm going to show it to you here. And uh, there's objections that are raised because of some of the things that are said. We're going to look at some of this stuff. I'm not going to look at everything in great detail, but there you have, uh, this is a Cambridge University Press King James Bible, the one I use typically in my preaching. The Epistle Dedicatory to King James and then the Translators to the Reader. And uh, you go through here and uh, where's that one section at? The, the One of the things that is oftentimes brought up Um, there you have translation necessary there. Um, let me zoom in a little bit so you can read it better. They say, uh, now to the latter we answer that we do not deny, nay, we affirm and avow that the very meanest translation of the Bible in English set forth by men of our profession, for we have seen none of theirs of the whole Bible as yet containeth the word of God, nay, is the word of God. Okay, now, what they're saying is not that this King James Bible is mean, it's bad, it's terrible. That's not what they're saying. Mean means just kind of common, low type of, uh, just like the common people. Low in birth type of a thing. If you look it up in uh, uh, Wanting Dignity, Low in Rank or Birth, Webster's 1828 Dictionary. If you look that up. So in other words, just uh, the, the translation that was made for the common people is what they're saying. And they're saying that, you know, we don't doubt that it's the Word of God. And, of course, there are other places where they say about translation, we could have translated this word differently or we could have translated that word differently. These men are scholars. That's the whole point. Um, but this, this argument comes that because they were not saying this is the inspired Word of God, we did a perfect job on this thing and everything else, uh, because of that and because some of the translators were Church of England, some were Puritan, um, they say that, See, they, you know, the, the King James translators would not have been King James only. So therefore, that throws off the King James Bible. No, um, because just like this argument against Erasmus being a Roman Catholic or King James, uh, they claim he was a sodomite and all this stuff. See, what they try to do, what these new versionists try to do is they try to say, these people connected with the translation of the King James Bible were not Bible-believing Christians, so therefore that disannuls the King James Bible being perfect and the inspired Word of God. Um, again, they need to be reminded of the fact that those men, Erasmus, King James, and the translators, they didn't write this out of their own minds. Okay, they were making a translation. You say, well, you know, translation of ancient manuscripts. You say, but, but how do we know, how can we really say for sure that their beliefs did not make it into the King James Bible? Well, let's see, um, Erasmus was a kind of a Catholic uh, scholar, but his works were never accepted by Catholicism. He kind of, when he died, he wasn't even really officially a Catholic anymore. But uh, you look at his beliefs and the beliefs of Catholicism, they're condemned in this book. Uh, what about King James? King James, Church of England, um, and they said he was a sodomite. He wasn't a sodomite. I mean, a guy was married, had eight children. I don't think he was a sodomite, you know. But uh, if he was somehow some kind of a secret sodomite or something like this, then why does this King James Bible condemn sodomy? See? If he controlled the thing or something like this, you know, and I talked about before this thing, this stupid thing of Francis Bacon, you know, that he had the finished text and he, he edited it and changed it and things like this, which is, again is really stupid because they were translators of the King James Bible that later were coming out and revising it and things as the English language was changing. So, again, stupid line of reasoning, but if Francis Bacon somehow changed the King James Bible, then uh, why does it condemn the New Age movement and the Masonic system and all that other stuff? And what about these uh, 54, later 47, you know, translators of the King James Bible? Um, if they translated it in a way uh, to suit their own beliefs, um, then why does the King James Bible condemn the Church of England and the Puritan system, the system of Calvinism? See, the King James Bible is a faithful translation. 
And again, you know, this, this whole of the best, you know, manuscripts that are out there, by the way, this whole argument, though, it all stems from this thing of, of the new versionist saying, well, see, the King James translators were making translations and they were making a, a new translation of the ones that were currently available. So that's all that the NIV is or the New American Standard or whatever else. And what they fail to mention is the fact that, no, the new versions, NIV, NASV, ESV, NLT, all that junk, all that stuff comes from a completely different set of Greek manuscripts that was rejected by the King James translators. Okay? And there, you know, there are parts of Vaticanus and Sinaiticus will get it right. I'm not saying that 100% of them, that they are corrupt in 100% of the places. But that's not the point. The point is they have messed up scriptures that you can clearly see they're taking verses out they're taking words out they're changing words and things like that they are satanic corrupt copies that's the issue here the king james bible is a is the final bible you know in a line of bibles that come up through using what is known today as the textus receptus the greek textus receptus in the english language there are other translations in other languages that come from that same text type the new versions, on the other hand, are coming from the Alexandrian. All the hundreds of new versions that are out there. Anything after 1881 in the English language. They're all coming from this corrupted text. So to try and say that the King James is a new version in its day, and so let's not be against the new versions in our day. No, no, no. Because the new versions are from different, it's from a different Greek text. Less than 1% of the extant Greek manuscripts. So, you know, this is, again, another stupid argument against the King James Bible. Uh, the King James translators did not have to be Bible-believing Christians. Okay, you look at the work that was done. You look at what the Bible says. Compare it with the new versions. Compare. Look at the fruit of the new versions. Look at the fruit of the King James Bible. Again, I can testify. 25 years of my life, I used a new version. New versions, New American Standard, and IV. And only just for the last, uh, I'm going to be 40 years old here this year, so, you know, not even 15 years yet, I've been using a King James Bible. My whole life changed. And I became saved, I got saved when I started to use this book. Okay, why? Because I was in a false system. A very false, wicked system that never really preached the true gospel to me that never really told me that I was a sinner and that I was going to hell and that I needed to, to come to the Lord in a repentant state. Okay, they didn't tell me that. And that new version, if I would have stayed with that, I'd have ended up in hell. So don't fall for the argument that uh, people trying to use the what the translator to the reader thing, trying to use that to attack the Bible-believing position. It doesn't hold any water.